All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Private Forest Accord Mitigation Advisory Committee, second day of our meeting that began yesterday. Uh, so our next order is to do the roll call. Andy, can you please do that? Yep, please respond in the affirmative. If you're present, Chad Washington. Here. Bob Salinger. Here. Kristen Rivard. Here. Keith Curtis. Here. Brian Chaparrata. Here. Andrew Gregory. Here. Mark Stern. Here. Mark Rambrammer. Here. Dr. Weichel. Here. Kate Webb. Here. Chris Allen. Here. Sarah Gregory. Here. All right, thank you. Good to go. Um, I'd like to remind everybody that we did amend the agenda. So our new agenda has removed the public comment. As this is a continuation of yesterday's meeting. So at this point, I'd entertain a motion to approve the agenda with yesterday's amendments. So moved. Second. Second. Um, so. Next, we've got the. Uh, and we had discussed removing the funding packet update and going right into deliberation. Correct. Is that correct? Yeah. Very good. So at this point, I'll just open up the floor to committee members that had an opportunity to revisit the projects yesterday after the meeting. And anybody that would like to recommend we move projects up or down or amend um, certain projects. If we don't have anybody that wants to jump, I can uh, start with one that I've kind of thought about over the evening. I mean, that is the culvert placements on the clear south port. So and this which one, one? Yeah, what's the title of that one? There's this report Creek, some lower north of Earth, large fluid and fish passage. Right. Bottom of page five. Uh, so this right. mean is the one where there is a uh, culvert replacement west where there's a regulatory requirement to place those culverts, but it also pairs with some some large wood placement and some habitat restoration. I guess for the committee to discuss, I would say we probably do not want to be funding things that are regulatory required. There's been concerns about like to what degree are these investments creating additional uplift? And, and I don't personally feel funding projects that are going to happen anyway, like a legal requirement provides anything additional. But there's a component here of <laughs> large wood placement and habitat restoration that is not legally required. It does provide up. And I think it would be great to see more applicants like this that have to do a, a legally required culvert placement, but are identifying opportunities well on site They've already got the equipment and the expertise there to do some in-stream work, habitat restoration, large wood, while you're already there. That seems like an efficient use of these funds. So I would open up for discussion the idea of partially funding this and funding the habitat restoration work, <coughs> but not funding the culvert replacement component. When we talked about it yesterday, there's some question about when they might be required to do it. Do you have any any update or any thought on that or to be determined or like it may be worthwhile funding because it's expediting the work? Well, just I mean, if if they're not going to be required to do it for 10 years. Yeah, you're right. It, or 20. I just didn't know what the time frame is. It sounded like you guys had a little bit of a lead on that. Well, there's also in the application their start date and end date. So we can say, you know, these funds we would like to give to you as long as you're able to stick to the timelines proposed. So it's not, uh, I don't know, I, I think that it's nice to know what that timeline is, but I don't think that is a, a make or break. I mean, we could talk through what Maria mm -hmm. requires and how that works, but that was a big part of the PFA process. So I'm in support of your position, appreciating that feedback. But I think my concern would be it would open the door to 
the proposal is great. Yeah, sure. yeah. 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 Understand um, it a little more. I'll take your all word for it. I don't need to understand it. No, I had discussed that. I had discussed that too yesterday. That is to say, the the idea that maybe this would be moving forward a project that would happen later. But I think my overriding concern is that this body get flooded with those kind of requests. And I think that all of us could claim that all of our culvert replacement projects are happening sooner because of this money. And so by that virtue, again, we could wind up with literally thousands of these requests. And so I like what you're proposing. I just don't know how it works, right? One, I I don't do the little system I had. I don't, I don't think I have all of the information you have about the project. And if the budget describes separate components, I don't I don't know. And if not, or is the charge to Andy to go sort it out with them within some parameters or how how should so I'm looking at the budget right now to try and determine that. And this is the the clear creeks one, right? Yeah. It had about two hundred thousand of their budget was for the culverts. Of 300. Yeah. So I think we could select, I mean, for this type of project too, if it's adding large wood, I think it's a little bit easier to scale based on the funding you have available. So I feel like this might be one where we could somewhat arbitrary. I don't mean to be arbitrary, but we yeah, could select it. Yeah, right? it has the budget the budget narrative up. It's that, pretty clear what's designated as a falling contractor. Ground crew for right. bucking and rigging, excavator for the uh, large wood, equipment mobilization, where we would not fund would be culvert removal installation or culvert one and two, uh, culvert removal road decommission, and the culverts themselves at 70,000 and 15,000. So mm -hmm. pretty easily identified. Yeah, yeah. I'm just pulling yeah. the calculator because I'm not good at math. Never have done. But. So, yeah, there's. 85 plus. I have 202. Yeah. You did this already. Yeah. Did you all do it? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, we would less, what did you say, 222,000? So that would be 202. 106,000. Oh, yeah. You're right. I just added the five in. Yeah. 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 Yes. I agree. And would we seek to have cost share at the same proportion for that 202? What do you mean? So, Andrew, we've, uh, the discussion is to not fund that two hundred and two thousand. I so see. Thirty-six thousand is what we would fund. So the question is, would we want to ask for some proportional cost share of what we would fund at the same rough proportion that they propose for the overall project? You're talking about uh, the match, is the that the match? Yeah, I'm sorry, because it looks like it's roughly a one-to-one, -one, slightly lower match. Yeah. I, th I think that would be appropriate to maintain the ratio of match, but the we ratio, couldn't, yeah, we couldn't, you know, propose that we're going to fund a third of the request and expect the same level of match. Uh -huh. I think we should be careful because our grant requirements don't require match yeah. for this mm -hmm. program. It's only a one three move. So I actually, unless that changed in a future solicitation, I think we should be agnostic, careful that. about that. Yeah. I so agree. just provide the amount that's for right. the approved component mm -hmm. subject to the culverts being removed and replaced. Mm -hmm. work at all that no, was a hundreds or something that you came up with 106 okay. 106 no so, a hundred thousand six hundred twenty seven oh. okay yes please <laughs> and this is all part of the kind of two weeks that you've got mm -hmm. to work with the applicant yeah. you won't be getting any um no culvert work out of that. So I'll note that I'll do the math on the back end. Thanks. That was uh, kind of the big one that I thought about last night, but I'm sure that members had projects they'd like to see elevated or amended. Mark. Well, I had a couple different thoughts and partly when you realize you'd like to elevate a project, it also forces you to think about, well, how, how would that happen? So yeah. sort of a couple step dance here, but one, I looked at the Pheasant Creek project that the department had rated as a medium priority and we had rated above the line, so to speak, and went back and looked at the notes. And, you know, AJ, you can chime in here too, since it was a project he reviewed and looked at, but 
did come out as a medium and one of his final comments was this project might be eligible for funding under S fish, which I think is small. It's a small fourth land investment program housed under the, uh, um, and, and the landowner of that property is a small forest landowner. So there's a part of, and also I think some of the comments was it wasn't clear what the quality of the upstream habitat was or downstream with the neighbors there. And they're one of the properties is in CRP and it was in disrepair. And so that one kind of stuck out at me, given that the department had rated it as medium and maybe there's an opportunity for this landowner to fund it under S fish. If that's true, I, I don't know. I'm there's no guarantee that they would be funded. Under yeah, that, though, and I feel like a different rating system and I would have to ask where they're at on that this year. It's also more limited funding, I believe. And then as the representative for small landowners on, on this committee, I feel like you know, that it's a plus that it's a small landowner. Like I'd, I'd like to see them elevated because of that, because they're competing against some really big names and it's not easy to be a small woodland owner. Right, good point. Did like, you have a project step though that you wanted to elevate? I do, but I had another one where I yes, thought sir. maybe there was uh, could I can I follow up, Fran, and just ask how many small owner projects are there? I didn't quite process that. Besides, oh, I don't one. know. Do you know how many are smaller in this? Um, in the full application. Um, I but give me a minute. I can pull up well, some information to see. We did partner with the Watershed Council. Right. Right. So it didn't come directly from organization type. <clears throat> right. It wouldn't filter by that. I guess when I'm. When I'm thinking about this, if there is a more appropriate grant that we can direct things to, uh, like our research example, I think that's fine to say, you know, this really isn't the house to try to pay for that. But to the extent that there's other grants available, but this still fits what we're trying to do, that's where I think it's maybe not the best idea to try to say there's other money available, go pursue that. Mm -hmm. um, because this is still like well within our purview of what we should be funding. And we don't know uh, whether or not they're going to be competitive in that other grant program or not. So I think we should probably be evaluating these uh, independent of those other funding sources, unless it doesn't really fit what we're trying to fund and we are aware of another grant that it would fit better. Then I think it's fine to say, hey, this is where you should go look for that. But this project does kind of fit with what we're tasked with doing. Yeah, I guess I was just incorporating also the department head ranked as medium, not high and not critical. So it's really not that there's a lot of good projects here and we're trying to sort them, you know, figure out what are the best ones. To fund. So that one to me raised that question. Yeah. And AJ, is uh, the other grant availability, was that, did that play into the ranking of? medium or what were some of the other reasons that you provided a medium instead of a high or a critical? Yeah, the medium was primarily based off of um, just the likely uplift compared to the other projects mm -hmm. um, that were reviewed. And then the uh, the addendum of adding the S fish was, I, I still think it's a good project. Um, and if, if it wasn't funded through this process, just suggesting that would be the, the route to per pursue for them. Yeah. So if we were to remove the S fish from the conversation, okay. would you have still given it a medium if you weren't aware that that other pool of money existed? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, to your point that it is medium, not because of the subject. Yeah, and I guess if we're, the, the other two projects that I was looking at, um, I guess by comparison, one, I looked at the Lower Smith River one again, and it looks like a really good project. Uh, I went through the application. There's a lot of pictures. I mean, it it's full on. Well described. Well, landowner agreements are signed. You know, yeah. they checked all the boxes. This is the one with the farm bridges. Yeah. Yes. The, the only thing I wondered about it was, you know, they're asking for 1.7 million, which is the, you know, the biggest chunk of money, almost twice as much as anybody else, which doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. But also if they could just do the project in two phases maybe because they're really kind of two distinct pieces there's 
one side of the river and the other side of the river. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have to do it all at once. You could divide it. And then the other thing that was noticeable is they secured OWEP funding for some of the work on the Glover side of the river, which means OWEP's already committed and invested in it. Mm -hmm. And being careful not to follow the same pathway again, it just seemed to me that we could fund half of that project and it's still a major investment yeah. and tell them come back for the other half next time or you know, maybe you'll find the other half of the money back at OM. So that was point. Mm -hmm. That creates headspace for what I'm assuming the other projects that you think we would like to elevate. Yeah, and I guess the one that I'm interested in elevating is the amphibian one that was rated critical by the department and came in just below the line uh, in terms of the, our our own evaluations. And part of it is because did that, did the research determine the genetic groups, their gradients, effective survey modes, creation of the situation of sensitive stream amphibians. Yeah. Don't fund that one. What's that? It's number 32. Yeah. Number eight, eight projects down below. Well, eight funding. projects down below, but it's a, you know, a yeah. sort of point down below. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. And I think just because it's, you know, the, as we talked about, amphibians are some of the uh, covered species, but yet, you know, have receiving relatively little attention or focus in terms of the suite of projects or the portfolio of projects that we're looking at. And it was rated critical by the department. That's a, that's all good points. It, it may be a very good project. I do still stand on that as a, a research project that absolutely could have policy implications. And the IRST is working on the research now, yes. yes, and that's where that work should be done. Mm -hmm. well, I, I guess my question there is that, you know, we put this proposal out and we have one of the boxes you can check is research and monitoring. So I feel like we've solicited. We may have, but that's true of a lot of things on, on this. Like mm -hmm. we're learning about kind of what we think are the most appropriate places to put our resources. And when we have, again, under the private forest accord a designated home for deliberately pursuing scientific questions and here we have an opportunity to fund on the ground conservation work i feel like it would be a shame if we were to you know forego conservation work and there are many projects that are still below the line uh when we know for a fact that presently the ampc and the irst is pursuing these questions on amphibians well, I guess, you know, I sort of go back to the point on the previous conversation where, you know, we could tell the landowner to go to S fish, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, at least how we set up our RFP, this project's entirely eligible. So. I agree, but like, if you think about how would you design a, a high quality kind of scientific program, I think, you know, when we were grappling with this in the private forest accord, it was a system where you would think about the most pressing questions and you wouldn't wait for the scientific proposals to come to you, you would pursue them. You would have a strategy around how do we design this? You would have scientists around a table that say, this is what's most important, kind of these are the questions we wanna go test as they relate to forest practices and the covered species and kind of build that. What we have here is kind of an ad hoc process where researchers say, hey, here's the thing I would like to do and they send it in to us. And ODF and W says, yeah, you know, this is, a scientific research project that would have some value, but the idea that we're going to use, you know, mitigation monies, that is to say, to mitigate the impacts of incidental take due to covered activities, to fund science outside of the IRST just, I mean, it just doesn't fit in the structure and it strikes me as very ad hoc. I, I disagree actually for a number of reasons. One, um, I, I think I think amphibians are going to have to be treated differently than fish, uh, and I think the biggest challenge I said this yesterday too in the uh, PFA negotiations on amphibians was lack of scientific knowledge. <laughs> we disagreed then on that too. Well, we, we didn't actually. We disagreed about what that what, the, what that science said, but it's in there. It's it was, there. It's science. There, there's a lot of data gaps. We don't even know the distribution of some of these species. Right. And so we had a very difficult time coming to consensus on what needed to be done. And again, uh, we went to 25 years to term on that because we didn't have enough data. And we thought what was going to come in 
I also don't think we're going to get easy amphibian projects they're, they're, unless we really target them. And I think there's going to be a both and with research. And this was discussed during the uh, PFA negotiations as well, that there was going to really need to be a ton of research where we're going to get a lot of money for that. And it's let, let, me, let me finish. All right. You, you took your time. I'm going to take mine. Um, and also, um, I think it's important that we send a message in this round that we have some amphibian projects. Most of the ones that list amphibians aren't doing anything for amphibians. They're doing something for fish, and, and amphibians are a bonus if, if they actually get a benefit. Uh, also, everything in this process is ad hoc, too. You know, yes. we're throwing a lot of stuff. I'm agreeing. Okay. <laughs> We're, we're, we're basically collecting a whole lot of projects without a whole lot of structure, without an HCP in place, without guidance from the regulatory agencies yet uh, that are overseeing the HCP. And so we're throwing a lot of stuff into this hopper, and the next round is going to get a lot more refined. And I think for $100,000, we can afford to throw in one very specifically targeted amphibian project. And I think it's going to have to be the targeted stuff we do through the monitoring and research buckets. There's also going to have to be some research projects that are a little bit of a flyer in this bucket as well, from my perspective. All right, thank you for that, Bob. And friend, you had a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to add on that. Like, I I do feel like we have a place for research. I don't think it's in this in this group. You know, if you go back to the section 32 and the items that were tasked with supporting research, is it included in that? So I just think we need to be aware of that. The statute, thank you. But also, when I reviewed this application, the claim was to do research on managed forests. There's not a single site selected on private land. It's all of the study sites were on public land that were easily accessible by the research. So I didn't feel like if the option is to try and research how privately owned managed forests have an impact on Vivians, this study isn't going to do that. Thank you for that, Fran. Um, I will also just offer that if we are creating that space, I personally would rather see uh, the Nez Perce Tribes project elevated around the same uh, request. They have over three times the match and uh, shovel ready like, through habitat restoration. It also scores higher than uh, this 32. I think that is likely just going to come down to a vote. On that one. And Can I ask a follow up question about whether the Northwest Ecological Research Institute is engaged at all with the IRST? You, you're fine to ask the question, Andrew. Uh, Jennifer, are you able to respond to that? Somewhat. Yeah, so please go ahead. Um, so the amphibians, I'm waiting for the correct answer right now, but they are the priority for IRST. Yeah, they're looking about um, probably about a year or so for the RFP to come out. So it'll be a similar you know, RFP sort of thing to um, have folks put in for projects. So there is a mechanism for that. Um, and then what was what, sorry, what was this question again? Exactly. Andrew's question was, does the uh, Northwest Ecological Research Institute? So the mechanism would be for them to connect in probably officially through the RFP yeah. program, but we could always have them make a phone call to Lisa Gaines at IMR to make that connection. And the results coming out of the IRST will then inform what type of projects that this group would fund with shovel ready right. habitat restoration that's targeted, filling some of the gaps that were mentioned in the project yep. by the right group. Right. Chad, I just, I feel like, like the, we are not well suited as a group of lay people to select among these. I realize we have the recommendation from ODF and W, but given the context of kind of the larger universe of research questions, I think that coupled with the statutory directive that the legislature passed uh, that doesn't include research and monitoring among the uh, buckets of work that this body would do, I think, you know, pulls us in a very particular direction. And I think given all of the high quality on the ground, shovels in the dirt projects available to us on this list where we to pick a research proposal on a divided vote would be a just a terrible way to start this process. I think it's a little bit of an overstatement, but uh, I mean, a terrible way to start the project. I, I, I would counter that with 
uh, amphibians were a huge part of this, and the fact that they're not showing up in the first round also sends a problematic message. I won't say a terrible message, but uh, by the way, I, I thought I heard Chad, you say we've got a 32. We've got a 36. It's, it's right below the line. No, no, no. It's number 30. Oh, number, okay. Make sure that folks knew that. It's in that that bucket of eight that are kind of at the line. Right. Kristen, you had something you'd like to say? Um, I, I don't know if it was well captured in the way we put the uh, program solicitation out, but in my mind, the research and monitoring component of this was really tied to restoration action. So it would be, you know, things like we've done a culvert to bridge replacement. Are we getting the geomorphic responses that we expected at that site? Are we seeing fish move through that location or not? It would be things tied to, or we attempted these three restoration styles on a reach, which are we getting the best response from? In my mind, I guess I just viewed the research and monitoring component as directly tied to restoration action, since that's the thrust of this programmatic funding. I'm very sensitive to the comments you're raising, Bob, though, about the importance that we're investing in amphibian work here. Um, I just, I think, would be more interested in funding something that tied to restoration mitigation activities more directly and left kind of the more just direct scientific research in the AM, AMPC. I, I feel like um, I worry about us trying to to be the space to do that kind of work that's going to drive our, our programmatic actions under the PFA in the future um, in sort of a, a, a process that is, I agree, a lot of this is ad hoc but that would also be not a directed solicitation for a particular type of research, but just coming in from that space. I don't know. Yeah, and Kristen, I think it's also important to not understate the degree to which there is structure and all of the hours that people on this committee, ex officio and MAC members put into creating some type of structure. Mm -hmm. So it's not entirely ad hoc. Yeah. And I know that wasn't your intent. I just want to make sure that everybody that put in a lot of time to try to create some framework uh, doesn't feel like we're discrediting that work now that we're getting ready to uh, Kristen, I appreciate your comment about sort of what type of research you think would be appropriate there. I guess the question, and you kind of raised it, is it's not, I don't know what guidance or direction we gave. I'm we worried about that this too. RFP, so I think we yeah. may have invited this type of proposal. Plainly, we did. There I were we huge did. studies proposed in, in our packet. I mean, we had mm -hmm. what a, it's like we had several million dollars. We had, you know, almost four million dollars for streams and road stream crossings proposed. We had uh, there were there were big projects and and I think that may have been a little misleading on our part. I, I do agree, particularly again, given the statutory directives. And Mark, you know, I think another important thing to consider is, although we may have made uh, an error in the solicitation, the way to correct that is not to then go further down the same road by then funding those. It's to change the RFP next year and, my, and to prioritize the projects that we do have that are more in line with what we're trying to accomplish. On no, that, that's it. Cool. Um, on this particular project, I just pulled it up and there were four activities listed. The first three were very much research. And then the fourth was identifying specific restoration actions that would then be supported with the outcomes of steps one through three. Um, I would consider, you know, responding that if this group is able to secure funding for those first three items, we'd be excited to invest in the fourth component that was really the applied restoration piece of the work. Yeah, I realize they can't do that without doing probably steps one through three, so right, that might that be But that could also come out of the IRST when but, um, they identified this. I don't know if there's a compromise pathway there that could do both. I guess I would just ask folks to think about the fact that we're about to distribute $10 million, and um, we're asking here for 100000 out of $10 million to yeah. go toward amphibians. Amphibians were a big part of this process. And when we talk about, you know, balance, geographic balance, uh, public private lands and other things, 100,000 out of 10 million is not a whole lot to ask for. And we did solicit these grants. So I, I mean, given the vagaries of this first stage of the process, I, again, I don't think this is unreasonable, and I think there's going to have to be a different kind of approach with amphibians anyway. As I've said that before, so I won't keep repeating it, but we're not going to be able to get there 
projects in terms of audit yeah. projects, the way we're going to be able to get there with fish. They're just not lined up. Not yet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it, we will hopefully yeah. after we get some results from the proper research body doing the research. Another thing is this is not an issue of amphibians. This is an issue of a research application that has a direct policy implication. It's not that we aren't trying to prioritize or deprioritize amphibian work. It's the project types, not the species that'll benefit. Yeah, and I guess, I mean, just speaking in all humility, uh, I had really hoped that this would be a table where we could work together toward common cause on conservation actions and mobilize meaningful money towards things that everybody could rally around. Uh, how scientific studies are framed and set up, the questions they ask in the first instance, is a place for potentially a great deal of controversy and that can really change the nature of the work on this board. I had hoped this would be a place where you know, timber industry and conservation interests could work together and develop relationships cooperatively and collaboratively. And I really fear that introducing, you know, investments, and this is precedent setting at $100,000, introducing investments of this nature into hot scientific questions is going to fundamentally transform the complexion of our I'm not sure talking about this one project really disrupts the nature of the collaborative nature of our board. You know, it's 1% of the funding. Right? I, yes, I understand. It's, it's just a precedent. Land included in the study, not one. That's a great point. It's a good yeah. point. And, and it I guess opens the door for the next I, I think of us having this dialogue and interchange isn't threatening the collaborative nature. I'm just looking forward. And I don't even really care that much about this project. And for the record, amphibians, as of my last time I checked, aren't even listed uh, species. And so it's like it was, it was covered because we thought it'd be a good place to go. But I, 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 I want to make clear that this isn't about this project for me or about this research project. It's mostly about, again, the nature of the work we're going to be doing going forward. And there were other proposals here that were a lot more provocative in the list that just didn't get ranked as high. Mm -hmm. Really, amphibians are a hot button issue. <laughs> it's not. I tried to make the point. It's not about amphibians. In fact, it's the number one priority right now for the IMPC and the IRST. That's, it's just a question of the home and the nature of the work we're going to do on this body. Yeah. I have a correction on that. It's, they're doing roads first, but the 12 month window still stands. We're an amphibian. Yeah. Yep. Any other comments? Well, I just think we're getting a lot more feedback on all of these projects. I think a lot of these projects, when the HCP gets done, are going to not be appropriate potentially. And well, the next things will look a lot different yeah. once we have the discussion. And so I don't think what we're doing here is precedent. I, I do just respectfully disagree with kind of the elevation of this to sort of a critical thing. I think we could fund something or amphibians in this process and send a message. I, I don't think this is going to be all and end all. Conservation work would be great. And that's another limitation here, Bob, is we didn't get a lot of applications, right? So we, we don't take an application that doesn't fit and make it fit. If we would have gotten more amphibian applications, it would have been easier. We did not. And so maybe there's some more work that needs to be done, not by us, but around how do we find what is a good amphibian project that's not a research project. What does that look like for you? Well, I'm, yeah. I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna contest that we, it doesn't fit. It came in at 36, it is right below the line, but for a third of a point, it would be above the line. So it, it, in terms of the various scoring, the expert opinions in this room, it was darn close. It was margin right. of error. And some of the expert opinions in this room also aren't followed you know, directly by what our directive is from the legislature. It's the quality of the project based on ODFW priorities. Is, is that fair to say that some of these reviews, the ranking high, critical, medium, were based off of ODFW's goals and objectives? In the context of the purpose of the funds. Right. So. Both ODF and W ranked it as critical. Mm -hmm. Great. So, did we want to revisit the headspace that we've created and see how much room we have to elevate projects? Because I would also like to discuss 
elevating the uh, Nez Perce project, which is a shovel ready restoration project. It is only two projects below the line. I think there's a lot of value in, in bringing that one forward. What was that project again? That's Cool Springs and Dawson Restoration Design. I, su I support moving that one up and funding it. We have the we have the money uh, from the Wolf Creek Clear Lower North for. So, blah, blah, blah. The one we decided to not fund the culvert. Yeah. So we've got the money to do that. We that by 202000 and this is 178. Yeah, so then we're still positive to do that. Um, I support uh, lifting the Nez per School Springs Dawson and Restoration Design Project above the funding line. Um, I guess I also wanted to put just a pause on um, the last conversation around the amphibian project to say I, I have not personally like made a decision on that. And so I'd like to keep that space open to revisit that um, as opposed to just sort of ending this conversation. Now, I think we should pause on it and do some yeah, other work to come back, back to it, but I'm not. Um, yeah, we'll come back to it. Okay. Thank you. We'll try to get some of these rankings figured out and then just decide as a group. Bring that up or not. So I had one. Well, just Chad, just to clarify on the cool spring, is, is it the merit of the project that you want to elevate it or the source of the applicant for both? It's both. It's both. And that also does come from the comments from ODFW Commission when Bob Van Dyke and I went in front of them and they made it very clear they want to see equity in this process and to not fund the same groups that have continued to receive funding in the past. I also like that project in the context of all of the other work that's happening in that system. I think it's um, will be leveraged for additional. Thanks. So one that I would suggest uh, if we, there's room and uh, I didn't do as much hard work as Mark did about kind of identifying projects that could be demoted, though I would vote for it over the North Fork Wall of Walla River project is the, the Cheney Creek project. This was one that was brought by um, the Applegate Partnership. Uh, it's got the strong support of the BLM. The ratings were from Chris Lorian is medium and AJ had it not ready for funding. It wasn't entirely clear to me what the conclusion there was. Uh, the, there's a kind of wildfire resiliency component that I don't think we would want to fund, um, but the covert work that they're proposing there and the, the structures uh, both sounded like very positive to me. And I didn't know, you know, the large wood structures in particular were well supported. This is work that they wanted to see done. And it's, a, uh, you know, the Applegate Partnership has been a productive uh, group in the past for getting work done. I haven't talked to any of them about this specific project, but they, I believe, come with a strong reputation. And I just thought it was worth the conversation. I didn't know if AJ, you had thoughts about your not ready for funding comment there. Yeah, that came from a couple of different aspects. Uh, one of them that you identified was the upland fuels treatment um, didn't have much strong justification, I don't think, I my reviewers for that for HCP species. And then the large wood uh, structures, uh, there was some mention in there about moving them as bank armoring. And it wasn't clear in the application how much of it was going to be uh, yeah. bank armoring versus interesting structures uh, for the benefit of fish primarily. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, I mean, if that's if that's the concern, I'm I'm willing to hear it. I suppose I would encourage the applicant to, you know, look to that feedback and potentially approach us again because I just thought it was a good group. They have precedent for doing work like this in that area and it seemed to turn out well and it was supported by the BLM. So I I, uh, I think it'd be worth revisiting that project in the future cycle. Any 
the other. Yeah, Mark. Uh, I guess the other project, and we talked about it some yesterday, was the one from the city of Vernonia. Mm -hmm. And it just gave me a little bit of pause, maybe on a couple points. One is, it'd be nice to have a little more thought on it if there were other opportunities for creating a swimming pool or uh, rather than just sort of keeping the swimming pool in stream, in channel with a diversion there and, you know, routing the fish around it. It didn't look like there'd been much discussion about are there other alternatives to meet the needs of the community there? Because we're probably looking at $100,000 for planning and then whatever, a couple hundred thousand dollars or more for fish passage. And all of a sudden, there's a lot of money going to fix a problem that was maybe that's not the best way to fix the problem. And I'm not advocating for one outcome or another, but it, it just sort of struck me that, that we haven't at least had the benefit of understanding did they look at other alternatives besides keeping the seasonal swimming pool in the creek? Mm -hmm. And I guess to me, it just was a little bit of a pause, feeling like it wasn't quite ripe to fund. Mm -hmm. And so as the applicant says they have a water right for it, so there's some precedent for doing what they're doing. But they had not, they said they didn't pretend, they said they'd get federal permits if they needed them. It just seemed like there was sort of more homework to be done there. So yeah. not so much a no, but a pause to sort of better understand mm -hmm. where they're going. And and it, last night, I, I guess I recall, I think they actually uh, submitted a proposal to OCRF previously. And we didn't have much discussion about it, but it wasn't highly scored, so it didn't really come up as a or discussion yeah right right that makes sense. to me it just seemed like one maybe to hold off on for the moment mm -hmm. chair if i may yeah. um i appreciate what you're saying mark and i think i think it's uh it's it's more of a i think a pause is potentially warranted there there seem to there seems to be a lack of clarity on compliance in permitting and i'm not sure that that's a position the committee wants to put itself in in Funding something that has some ambiguity about its compliance and permitting at this time, especially knowing that the, the agency and uh, you know DOJ will take one look at it and say that's too much risk for for the state to be putting funding into a project that has compliance and, and permitting questions, and so then you're back to maybe having to pull back, whereas you could make the decision now to fund something that doesn't have that kind of ambiguity. Um, At least, and the guidance that Andy could then provide back to the applicant, <clears throat> you can get more clear on the on the situation. It's it's always welcome to come back. I suspect there's a little bit of a chicken and egg problem. I suspect that they're trying to look, trying to get resources to design a good solution, and this is what they've thought, and they would like to preserve the in-channel resource that they have. I. You know, I don't, if folks want to kill that project this time around, I'm not going to be bent out of shape about it. I just saw it as a good opportunity to kind of align human use with natural resource use and in a way that can create kind of a win-win instead of like, you know, kicking a community for like a thing they've done forever through some kind of enforcement thing. I, I just felt like it was a really good opportunity to kind of reconcile wildlife and conservation priorities with something that a community plainly values. So um, if they need to do more homework on their own before they bring it back to us for another proposal, I, you know, I can I can line up the folks on that. I just thought it was a neat opportunity. I agree. So is that uh, the Rock Creek Fish Dam passage? Mm -hmm. Is that an entirely planning project or is there a component for design and a component for I think implementation. It's, all, it's, all it's all designed. It's all designed. It's all designed. I, see. I, I think the comment of going back saying they need to do a little more homework is a. I think it's fair. Yeah. Like I want to love this project, but also I like on the same vein where we're, you know, defending shovel ready projects and wanting to do shovel ready projects with this, especially with this first round. I feel like. And this is probably using planning a little bit better. All way. planning too. Yeah, right? it's so all planning. It's, so it's not. It's a step in the right direction, but it, it doesn't provide that. Here's your solution. The fish are now going around. Here's the sign saying, you know, this money 
did this. So I, I guess I'm agreeing that maybe we could deprioritize that. Yeah. And ask for more information. Yeah, yeah, and give them some positive. Instructive. Because he thought, I mean, I'm with you on sort of the community solution mm -hmm. part. That's a great place to end up, but I think it doesn't seem quite primed yet. Sounds fine. I proposed another one for raising up yeah. if we well, can we uh, just I'll clarify that. We're going to move that one down and ask for uh, a little bit more. Okay, got it. So then that was for 125,000, the Rock Creek Dam passage improvement. Yep. So are you kind of keeping track of where that funding line is and how much space we're creating? And yeah, after some additional discussion, I'm, I'm keeping track of some numbers here. We can do a check in okay. and kind of maybe have a quick break and then I can see where we're at after a few more. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I just was uh, on that last one, just ask Kelsey, since it was in your region, if any input to our conversation here. Uh, no, I mean, I think, yeah, the comments I had made yesterday kind of helped cover how the review team felt. Yeah, I think um, uh, uh, the review team was just kind of wondering if other opportunities had been looked at, but still understanding that um, the passage within this area is um, like an ODFW priority. Um, I wanted to consider raising Baldwin Creek Fish Passage and Habitat Enhancement, which was the project just immediately below the funding line. I feel like we kind of skipped over it. I don't think that was one I reviewed. Um, I'm trying to skim through it now and see Confederated Tribes of the Warm Springs is one of the core partners. It appears um, that Almost double the match. Yeah, high amount of match, really positive comments from the review team that I've seen. The biggest negative I'm finding in the comments was that the timeline appeared aggressive for implementation relative to the decisions on this funding, but then it noted that they have landowner agreements for access for three years on all of the sites. So if there was a you know, if they can't get a contractor with an award the state, which at 30% design, it, it does seem ambitious to me, but um, that doesn't feel, it feels like they're maybe not truly shovel ready, but pretty close to it on this project. And considering it was the first one, <laughs> below yeah, the one line, it seems like we should be considering it to, to lift up. Um, Is anyone opposed to elevating that project? I would support it, I guess, Brian. I'm in. Um, and then depending on sort of the budget allocations, um, given the one immediately above it for the North Fork Walla Walla River, I also thought that was a solid, great project. It is a very large ask and it's for two phases. And so one opportunity to create a little bit more space um, to pull some of these projects up would be to do a partial investment in that that covered you the, know, implementation the implementation the implementation part and not design or some combination or allow the applicant to assess what their match yeah. or other sources would be to maybe do both i don't know that um as anyway I, that was one idea i had for creating some space as i recall on that on the wall one they have i had thought about bifurcating it they have the design work done for a mile correct they're looking to do that implementation and we're looking for money to design mm -hmm. the next one Yes. And you could do the implementation. Correct. Yeah. I reviewed that one and I had the one ranked really high. Which one? Baldwin Creek. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Is there any opposition to moving that above the funding line? I think, yeah, with the 200, I think you shaved off of Clear Creek and with the 125 on Rock Creek, you already got room to do that without even modifying the Walla Walla project. I'll hold the Baldwin Creek as well, their funding up above the funding line. Yeah. Full funding amount they're asking. Um, Kristen, could you uh, just reiterate for us quickly where you think some additional clarity might be needed from the applicant? It's from which project? Baldwin. It sounded like. Oh, I didn't think there any additional clarity no, was no, needed. Clarity. Okay. okay. The okay. additional clarity was coming from the Rock Creek Dam, the uh, Bernonia. I thought there was something about the 30% stage of Baldwin. So I, my comment was just um, the reviewers said it's ambitious to think it'll go into construction this field okay. season if they're at 30% design currently and not sure if they have 
funding to get through permitting and most particularly solicited solicit contractors and okay. do that. But my comment was just if they can't pull it off this field season, that didn't seem like it would be a to me that if it happened next have a next season. Plan. Okay, thank you. It appeared from the limited information that that would, that would be fine. So, we moved some projects up, some projects down. We discussed splitting some of these. We currently now, the next project below the funding line is the Cool Springs and Dawson restoration design. $178,000 project. And if we were to make some room, uh, as we just discussed yeah. around the Ford 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 Ford, split that into uh, funding the implementation phase, that would allow us to bring the Cool Springs project up. Is that something that uh, the committee would support? Yeah, I reviewed that one too. That one was also ranked really high. It was the yeah. third highest in my ranking. Very good. Yeah. That one? So I support it. Very good. Thank you for chiming in, Andrew. Appreciate that. So the proposal, though, is to not fund the design, design work on the Walla Walla project. Correct. In combination with then moving Cool Springs and Dawson restoration design up. Which means I don't know what was the breakdown on the Walla Walla project of cost for implementation versus design. That may not have. I think it was 170 for their design, but the salary part wasn't split out between what's design and what's implementation. So we could choose to fund that part of the salary. But I mean, it's, it's not like we freed up half of the Walla Walla no, budget. No, but I do believe we freed up, up enough to bring that. Up. Right. So very well. So we did create an additional 300,000 in space. And to be clear, this funding line was over our 10 million. Is that right, Andy? Correct. It was 10 million 73. Right. So the degree to which we don't match them perfect in our math, moving things up and down, there was this was still $73,000 over our 10 million. Thank you. The other one that we talked about yesterday was North Fork Eagle Creek, which was the one that had the big fuels reduction mm -hmm. component in the application. Yeah. Um, at a minimum, I just want to make sure that if that's awarded, um, that we go through the process of assuring the funding is being used for eligible purposes. So for which projects? North Florida Eagle Creek. Number they nine. Clarified in their budget yeah. that they weren't doing fuels reduction. As a note, but I don't think it. Yeah, this is the thing where that I looked at last like, night to tell that it was really accomplishing that. Yeah. Um, I, I think, but I do think in the budget that they described, all of the four hundred and seventy-six thousand dollars at a home that's not fuel treatment. They did, Ethan. I so, think the yeah. point that Chris is trying to make is one that I share: is that when an application comes through, it signals to me how important the money is to you as an applicant, with your ability to not just do a cut and paste, but to at least review and make sure the letters are to this body yeah, and right. not someone else. Yeah, to make sure that the dates are at least the right dates. It doesn't feel like a big lift, and I'm not talking about judging the merits of an application on how eloquently they describe their project. That's not what we're here to do, but there are some kind of basic things that should be checked. Are you addressing your letters of support to the right body? Is the date, you know, the current year? And I don't think that's too much of an ask. No, agreed. The only point I was making was that I don't think by making that clarification, we've actually freed up any of the no, I, I agree. Wait, where did we land on this project yesterday? Because then I wrote down like potential. potentially to bump it, but I don't remember. I don't remember why I wrote that down. I can't remember. Uh, we're bouncing subjects, um, but the design on the Walla Walla one is a hundred and fifty thousand dollar contract. Oh. I'm unclear how much of the salary yeah. um, is attached to that. Where did seventy one thousand salary? Um, so it seems we could reduce that by like 170 or something and still support all implementation. Very good. That would be your Dawson Creek. We would need about 178. 
the move 170 from Northport Walla Walla. Yeah. Yes, sir. And then move that funding line down one more to uh, include the Nez Perce application for Cool Springs and docks and restoration design. Sorry, Rand, now you're moving to your other side. No, no, I just, close the like, did line. anyone else write down bump question mark on yeah. that one? Does anyone remember why? I think it was because of the confusion about the fuel treatment. Okay, so we're comfortable. Budget. I mean, it looks like yeah. a good project. I, mean, I, I wrote the bump it as well, and it was based on exactly what Mark's describing the level of confusion and lack of clarity in the application itself. Okay. Um, I think we clarified that it's they're not asking for money for fuels. Right. right. And I think what I heard yesterday uh, from the staff was it was one of the more important projects in the Clackamas system. Yeah, in the cloud. Yeah, okay. Let's uh, actually give Paul a chance to weigh in. Is that? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I outlined that a little bit in the review. Um, and I agree that when I read the application, I could tell right away that it was a cut and paste. And I don't know if that was due to the just the timeline. And there's a lot of other grants to do that fall for a lot of these watershed councils. And I heard that across um, all of them that they were, you know, kind of cramming to get stuff in for this one. Um, but I think just the project itself, the merit and where it's at in the Clackamas Basin, you know, Eagle Creek is a tributary below all the high head dams I talked about, um, a productive stream already building on other projects in the area. And this is adding um, 150 logs to the project. I think there's already roughly 300 going in. So after they designed the project, sounds like they got some more review from some of the district fish staff there that wanted to see the, the wood volume come up there and that they liked the design, but they thought that, um, I can't remember how many um, wood jams they um, decided upon, but they thought that number should go up to really get the full benefit. So that's what um, it was unclear in that application, but then in that one paragraph of how the funds will be used, they did clarify that. And uh, I think, it all, yeah, kind of all those things combined where it's at in the Clackamas. Um, really good project, um, building on other stuff in the area that I think is definitely a, a great project and the uplift potentials there, um, but agreed that it was kind of poorly written. Yeah. Thank you all. Yeah, yeah that substantiates everything. This is a, a good project in the area that needs to, by chance, uplift. I crossed out. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's now back on keep. We're so keeping it. Okay. So far. Yeah, I think the math works then. Um, okay. So we can I do a quick rundown of where I think we are with all of these that have been discussed? Yeah, please do. Okay. Well, um, Pheasant Creek, if the committee is considering pulling that one off of the fund list, but I didn't hear the articulation for why. Well, Which one? one? Pheasant Creek. I don't think we decided to pull it. Oh, that we were keeping it. Keeping it. Keeping it. Keeping it. I, yeah. I, we okay. I think no, that's just in a pause still. Yeah. Got it. Uh, was it hasn't been bumped yet. Okay. I'm just running through my list, so this is useful to get some corrections here. Yeah, we hadn't made a decision on it. Yeah, so we've not made okay. a decision. Cheney Creek. Um, Keith asked for consideration of moving that one up, but I, it sounds like there's a concern about the upland component to it. Yeah, I'm going to make that. Clear Creek. Uh, I heard some mention of, of shaving off 200K. 202. 202. And what was the reason for that? That's the culvert related costs that we are not going to fund because they're uh, regulatory requirements. Thank you. Thank you. Likely. Like, yeah. They are likely a regulatory requirement. Um, cool Springs Dawson proposing to elevate that one above the funding line. Valuable work in the context of other work happening in that system and also an equity consideration. Yeah, if you want to add that equity consideration, that's fine, but really it's the merits of the project. Mm -hmm. uh, Walla Walla, don't fund the design work, which is roughly 150K plus potentially some of the salary, um, just the mile of implementation. Right. So I was putting, looking at the salary budget, I 
estimated 20,000, I think it's around 70,000 to cut 20,000 from the salary budget to make that a 170 reduction. I don't, but that's me making numbers up looking at their budget. Okay. We, can, we want to go for a more rigorous process on that. And Baldwin Creek, Baldwin Creek proposal is to elevate right. Rock Creek, the Vernonia project, um, pausing. So potentially not funding that one. I think we decided not to fund it, not okay. to fund it, but seek additional information and or encourage them to get clear okay. so that we could fund it. Were there any others? I think that's where we're at now. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and just making it clear to the city of Vernonia that we would love to see this come back once some of our concerns have been addressed. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's where we're at now. So should we reopen the other? Conversation. I think that is kind of the last piece. Should we pause and oh. give them a chance to do the math I'd for five minutes so we could make sure where that's, we're at? Is that a possible? That would be amazing. Yeah. While you're working on this, you have something you wanted to add, Mark? You just well, um, I'm okay if we don't revisit the Lower Smith Estuary one, but you know we talked about that being another one to split, but possibly one to split. I think it's a really good project, but it. At 1.7 million, we could split it. Yeah. yeah. The, the other one, I guess, I was interested in just getting a little more feedback on was Cunningham Creek, because I know the department rated it as medium, and you know we all scored it higher. And I think AJ, you can help me here, but I think yesterday you made the comment. Um, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the sorry, habitat wait, wasn't as. Creek. He yeah. said the habitat wasn't as functional as others, and maybe the lift wasn't as good there. Mm -hmm. um, I hear a comment on um, the Smith River Estuary one. Um, I agree, it's a big dollar amount, and that could be split into two funding awards. The flip side is I think the focus on coho recovery and that geography and ODFW's consistent prioritization of that area um, and the importance of it in the overall scheme of um, OC coho recovery. I'm inclined that if there was a place we were going to put a big amount of funding in general, that geography is very attractive to me. Um, and the Watershed Council in question, I think, is really important for our capacity to address things in that that region in general. So um, I actually spent a bunch of time this morning thinking about whether that budget should be cut because it's such a big portion as well. And I kind of, after my work, ended up in a place where I thought we should fund it for whatever that's worth. But um, your points are well taken and valid. I was kind of conflicted, but that yeah, was a place where I was like, you know, if we were going to do something big, that feels like a really good place to do mm -hmm. something big. I guess. Um, yeah, I don't I don't disagree. I also know that, you know, we're funding a high proportion of the projects we're funding are in region three already. That's an odd point too. Yeah. Yeah. I I guess on that, if we're looking at our regional split here, to fund a lot of them in region three is also proportional to the area that we received the applications. Region, region one has a lot too. Region one does have one, but to the degree to which we have a lot in Region 3, we also have a lot of applications coming out of Region 3. I don't know. I don't know what that means or whatever <laughs> it's worth. I, but Mark, I, I would not um, throw us back. If we wanted to split that and bring some others up that we're going to project split with funding line, I would, I, I'm fine with that too. I just was going to share my logic. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I think it's yeah. kind of six of one, half dozen with the brother there. I, it's a great project. <laughs> they could probably And maybe that is also the one that becomes like this first year's showcase project of almost $2 million invested in high impact. And Chris, since that's gone through OWEB, are you familiar with it at all? Not. Also, we would be able to probably claim uh, a lot of that coming out of this campaign. 
whatever that's worth. Sorry about where yeah. Um, AJ is back in the room, so I just wanted to ask him about Cunningham Creek. Cause yeah, great. Yes. Uh, well, we're well, when you're out, we I guess I raised the question of of the department that kind of come up with a medium ranking there. We had ranked it high, but I just wondered what your thoughts were on the medium, so to speak. Um, I think it was again in relation to the other projects that were received. Um, and the potential uplift with regards to the lack of functioning habitat downstream of the projects. Um, I think that's where, where we came out at meeting in the week. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, including, so for removing Clear Creek, not removing, but bringing down to 100,000. Uh, Rock Creek Dam is zero, and then including the Baldwin Creek and Full Springs, we're at ten million two seventeen. Didn't remove the one seventy from all law. Mm -hmm. All law. All the wall. Uh, let me double check that right now. North Fork Wall of Walla. Two. Like ten million even in forty seven thousand dollars, correct. Do we have any wiggle room on that? Uh, we can give more though. Cool. That feels uh like the right amount of wiggle room. I, I don't think we'd want to just throw another project in. But yes. forty seven thousand oh, feels yes. appropriate. Mm -hmm. okay. Again, that includes the volume of creek and cool springs full of others. Which feels good because they're the first two, like just in terms of being logical about it. So that's where we're at now. Um, I guess now we can open up the discussion, but I will say we are going to have to keep it brief. We have 18 minutes before we go into committee voting. And I recognize that when we open this discussion, it may become lengthy. And so if it does, please do not take it personally if we have to move the conversation on at 1030 or like after just so that it doesn't run away from us here. So now uh, we can discuss, revisit the discussion we had earlier around uh, the research project uh, for Northwest Ecological Research Institute. I think we had two pauses that we need to finish decision. That was one. Um, and then uh, full funding or not of the uh, Smith River Estuary project. I don't know that we, we, we reached consensus. consensus. That's in Creek, too. Wasn't that? So that was in Creek was on that's pause, too. That's on pause, right? Oh, you're right. Yep. Yeah. So we probably in the next 18 minutes need to. So is Pheasant Creek was on pause, and what were the other two? The other two? Pheasant Creek was on pause, and also the splitting, potential splitting of the Smith River, uh, Lower Smith River estuary into uh, phase one, phase two. And we're currently 200,000 over, is that right? 47,000. 40, so I would just point out for the group that the, there's two, the next two projects um, are the Cottonwood Creek project in Lake County, and then in the Halem Basin Partnership and Stream Enhancement Project. Um, so if there was a reduction in the Smith River, um, personally, I would propose elevating the Halem Basin as the next rank, at, which was 304, 305,000. Like, and for the record, the next, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, all at the same time. Yes, they're, they're that's listed, right. That's correct. Listed in alpha bonus. Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. But squirting. Right. Thank you. Sorry. Mm -hmm. That's a good. Yeah. So, so I think my position stays the same of those. Yeah. So I guess we we should do two things. One, do we want to split the the Lower Smith River estuary? What are your thoughts, Clark? Think about it. Sounded like a good case for 
like there's a clear line of how you could split it. Yeah, I guess there's a part of me that doesn't want to second guess them. So um, there's a part of me that reads, oh, well, we've already bought the bridges. They're waiting to put the bridges in. The bridges are going to be used on the one side of the river to encourage cattle to use the bridges to cross over it rather than walk through the stream. And there's a part of me that says they they already have a they're already going to OWEB. Our OWEB's already invested, and they can probably get the money from OWEB. It has a lot more money than we do, and it's already a big project. So that's the one side of me that's saying and split it. The other part of me is saying I think it was one of the best proposals we got. It's really well put together. Landowner agreements, pictures of what's on site. So why get in the way of? Kind of. That's where I'm at. That I just added my initial review of that one. I, I did recommend taking out the farm bridge part of it and so splitting it effectively. That, that Does the a, budget clarify which you, pieces go for which? So yeah, it's what like would be five, the five hundred and thirty goes for the uh, the farm bridge side, so to speak. So that would be just about exactly the headspace we need to free up to bring those other two projects that uh, Kristen just mentioned. Uh, and this is one where, if for a large ask. The applicants were here as we talked about it would be really helpful to understand that there's something we don't know. So we're at about four hundred and seventy thousand that we're looking for for the bridge to uh so you said it was around five hundred for the farm bridges. I don't remember in five thirty, but I can't see my notes. Can you pull it? I can bring up the budget. That also um, addresses the forty seven that we're over now. <clears throat> so I guess Andrew has this. Oh story. Andrew, please. Yeah, a question for Kelsey about the Nahalem uh, project. You had indicated there was concern about the durability of the That's right. a large woody debris structures during high flow events. And I just wanted to probe that a bit as to how serious those concerns are, because I'd hate to fund a bunch of stuff that ends up in the <laughs> Nahalem Bay. Um, yeah, that was a comment. I, yeah, kind of from the review team, just because uh, it was stated in the application that um, it wasn't with that salmon berry portion, it wasn't necessarily um, like an ideal place, I believe, for wood placement. And there wasn't then much explanation further. Um, I, uh, I think similar work has been done in other areas. Um, and um, Another comment that was made was there were also maybe some new designs that might look different for that specific area, but um, uh, the review team kind of had then decided that uh, potentially if funds were limited, maybe trying to set aside that salmon berry portion just um, based on the fact that those other in-stream um, placements are uh, within critical areas of um, that watershed. Okay, thank you. So just to make sure I understood you, Kelsey, the recommendation was that the other areas proposed looked good. Salmonberry was questionable for siting for large wood. Yeah, and I, I think with more details on that, that's like where a hydrologist could speak <laughs> yeah. better to that. Maybe on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So if we were to bring Cottonwood Creek and the Halem up, and we were to reduce the Lower Smith River by 500,000, that would be just about exactly $10 million. Is somebody proposing that we move Cottonwood Creek up? Oh, that's just... Uh, I just listed the next two, but that was not recognized. They're going to all 36. So uh, he corrected me that that okay. next group of 36 is all have the same okay. score. Yeah, that's so that's al that alphabetical. Yeah, um, that was. I, mean, I guess it wouldn't surprise you if I was going to move one of those projects up, it'd be the uh, thermal gradient. You know, yeah, the, the yeah, yeah, I understand that. So on, on the. Uh, Mr. Edgar, uh, the farm bridge is, is actually the contract is for two hundred and fifty thousand. 
Okay. And then there's a lot of money in there for staffing that uh, 56,000 for the executive director restoration corner project manager watershed technician. And I think there's also on that same side 230 or something for the tidal stream restoration, which seems sort of hand in hand with doing the bridges. Yeah, 280. Correct. You get a little nervous about kind of like drawing kind of a line through that project and this process and saying this works on this for us funding wise and that doesn't. Again, I'm not familiar with this at all. I, I suppose I have a little predisposition to taking the projects as they come, you know. I, I'm totally with you. The only thing here is they're on two different sides of the river. So that's the. It's doable, uh, like literally a physical line. Yeah, there's yeah. it's two separate projects packaged together. I see. Yes, I'm very used to the idea of big projects getting funded partially, you know, and you take what you can get. Is that right? Yeah. The bodies like this, I have never served on a body like this. Do they? Do they often kind of get their pencils out and scratch out elements of grant applications? I've been on, yeah. I mean, to some degree. I mean, you don't want to you don't want to make it infeasible and nickel and dime people, but I think where there are discrete pieces where there are separations, it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like the culvert and the the clear creek or whatever that one was on the yeah. No, I agree. It's the same thing. I just I don't know. I, I agree it's a little tricky because sometimes there's economies of scale. You got multiple things going on at once. You have one staff person managing a whole project and then you splinter them up. And By nature, I'm a lumber. So like for me to split this project, it's hard. I do see your point. I, and I was like, well, if we could split it and then fund all of the projects that had the same ranking below, then my mind kind of goes, well, maybe that's a good way to go. But that's not the case. If we split it, that doesn't get us enough money to fund all the next projects. So I feel like we're in a good place with a, a line that we can justify. Like these are the ones that scored above it. These are the ones that scored below. And we get into some murky water if we split it and then are trying to elevate some over others. So I just struggle with that a little bit. I think it does raise an interesting process issue that I'm dwelling on a little bit, which is if we want to be in this business of fun doing partial funding of projects, it would have been beneficial to have the applicants here to have a little bit of feedback because I, I am a little nervous about us not having enough information to know what, whether we're cutting something that's a linchpin to a project or that what could have been done very easily through economy of scale. You, you're, you already mobilized the equipment there, but you can't do that piece, you know. So I'm not used to ODFW <clears throat> granting bodies don't typically do partial, so I'm not as comfortable with it. But um, to your point, you have a you have whole project, you have a justification for why it's above and below the funding line, and there's always going to be more you wish you could fund. As a you, oh, thank you. Chris. Oh, I was just going to um, add that one of our grant programs, um, our recovery grant program, on the form we we have a a, a box where they can state uh, you know their their primary funding ask, and then what is the minimum uh, that would keep the project viable if we couldn't fully fund it. And a lot of times they you know that's the same dollar amount, but in yeah. other cases it's not. You know yeah. they say if, you know we could we could. Make, we could still move the project forward with 100k less or something like that. So, just as, as an idea for thinking about mm. our conversations about round one and changes in round two, we might want to see yeah. if we can or think about that a little bit. Um, just it might add some flexibility to these types of discussions. It would certainly be helpful to know that out sitting here trying to review them what that minimum to move it forward would be. I was going to make the same comment, but maybe with a more explicit question of if partial funding is awarded, how would you divide the project? So that kind of yes. force yes. it a little bit more. Yep. Tell us how you scale. Yeah. Put that on your list. For I think we can think about reserving space the next time we do this for uh, ability to send out questions to folks. Yeah. You know, so we can get some feedback from them. And I just wanted to bring them all in given the volume of projects, but I think at least giving us a week or two to send out questions. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And that would be in addition to the, the highest ranking ones, then also be able to have an interface during the meeting, or is that? 
separate. Potentially, I mean, I think, that, I think that's separate, and that that's obviously going to extend the meeting dramatically given how many projects we do have. But uh, I think a bare minimum, the ability for the uh, committee um, to send that's out right. questions and you know summarize them and get them out quickly and get them back and speak through. So, so. I agree. So as we sit right now, Sarah, if we were to fully fund the lower Smith River and not divide it, is our funding line now, including Cool Springs and Dawson uh, restoration design as our last project? Um, yeah, so we haven't changed anything since last one. So we're at 10 million, 47,453. 47, um, that does not include them in Hayden. Based on parking trailer, not including the water. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this then becomes the. Mm -hmm. So then, right, do we want to revisit that doesn't? Yeah. We never fully close that buffer, right? Well, so yeah, that's the next thing we can discuss here in the next five minutes. Mm -hmm. Do we remove Pheasant Creek Fish Passage that's scored higher by this committee, ranked lower by ODFW? in lieu of bringing that money to support the portions of the Nahalem Basin Partnership in stream enhancement projects that could be covered. So this looks like log placements in Betty Creek, Salmonberry, God's Valley Creek, Big Creek, Finicky Bull Creeks, Oak Creek Ranch, North Fork Wolf Creek, and Rack Heap Creek. I think it's not enough money without knowing to what extent those things all have to be done. Yeah more contemporaneously. Yeah. Um, so I fear we're setting up a hard battle between the thermal genetic amphibian research and yeah. the Pheasant Creek project. It's so I guess to call it out, but I think that's the decision. I, I think you're absolutely right. And just based on the advisory committee scores, there is not much difference between uh, these other ones and those two, but there's a big difference between a 37.3 and a 36. So our committee has scored Pheasant Creek as the higher priority for what that's worth. But yeah, I mean, I. <laughs> and it, but it's not just Pheasant Creek. Like we, I mean, there's any any number of projects that we could say, okay, we're going to dump this one and swap in that one. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. So I guess yes. Yeah. So we want do we want to continue to keep Pheasant Creek Fish Passage on here? I support that project. I, I support the project given a choice between funding another one in the South Coast or trying one on the amphibian one, I'd go for the amphibian one. Okay, well, uh, it sounds like then we're talking about Pheasant Creek for the amphibian one. Is that is that where we're at? I will just voice that I will not support research when we are tasked with in Senate Bill 1501 to do fish passage work explicitly and not research. And the same sets up the AMPC and the IRST to do that research with a different bucket of money. So the research will be done. It's been identified by Jennifer as being done within the year. And I think that, that is potential for opening ourselves up to some real issues to direct that money outside of the bounds we've been given here by the way. We can put that to a vote. I just think it's important that the committee all understand. That's why I provided the, 32, yeah. the language here, section 32 of 1501, that clearly states what we are to fund. So you should all have a copy of it. I didn't get a full copy of it. No, we have section 32. Section 32. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with that. I guess I'm just saying we put out a request for proposals for research and monitoring. and. Which was an error, and do we further the error by then funding something that we shouldn't have asked for? Well, and to Kristen's point earlier, and I agree with you, and correct me if I'm mis, mis reiterating your point, but the 
my thought on that research and monitoring was to the direct impacts of that project. Like, is the project on the ground effective for what we asked for? Not, are we doing a research project? And we have already strayed a little bit from that, offered some flexibility as a committee by supporting the other research project around the brook trout, because that is not something that's going to have this policy nexus. And it's not something being undertaken by the IRS team. And so we've already exercised a little bit of flexibility there. I think this takes it one step too far, personally. And I think that we should use the language in Section 32 of 1501 to guide our decision making. That's what we've been tasked with as a committee by the legislature. Can you show me where it is? Because it's Section 32 on the page hand 12. Yeah. Yeah, so just it just outlines all the things that we're going to find. It doesn't mention the IRST. That's what I was saying. No, because oh, it's yeah. not part of this. This is what we are to do. Okay. And this is what our MAC program is to fund. The adaptive management piece below there is where IRST is set up. I just think we should focus on projects we can all get behind. And there's plenty on this list. Yeah. The I don't think we've heard, you know, one of the things that, that we want to encourage you to do is um, if you're going to remove a project from above the funding line, you provide, you know, just articulate the reasoning why sort of mm -hmm. grounded in their, the criteria by which you review projects. And we haven't heard yet why Pheasant Creek would come off. Part of it was the um, recommendations from the review team were that it was a medium, not a higher critical. Okay. So this group had scored it sort of out of alignment with the technical review team's okay. recommendations, which expressed some concern about the project. So but that can we can argue that. Up, but your point is still well taken, though, sir. We just need to make sure we're documenting. Like, right, if you want to speak in the Yeah, uh, thank the you. Can respond. So I just, I mean, I appreciate so much the effort that ODFNW did in their review, but my priorities might be different than ODFNW's. And so then I, th I think it's absolutely okay that some of our projects ranked differently. Like, I think that's an expectation that they wouldn't fully align. And to clarify, these are not your personal priorities, but your priorities as a MAC member, correct? Yeah, as a MAC member representing Small Willow. Yes. Yep. I would yeah. also add, and this complicates things a little bit, I like, like the funding line and scoring thing, uh, goodness, I like you have to have kind of a way to do it, I suppose. But like I didn't review all of the projects. I don't know what kind of greater Mark was versus me. Like if I liked it, I just kind of gave him tens, and that's obvious because all my projects are like here. But the uh, I just I feel like it's a mistake to attribute a lot of weight to this scoring. If there's good projects that are in the 35s, I'm totally willing to look at those. I don't. I, yeah. I really feel like funding line in this process is a mistake, like analytically. And you still able to say to you research project. Are there any below the current funding line that were ranked as high or critical by ODFW's review oh, teams? Oh, oh, two. Wait, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> two, like, two bullets. <laughs> two that they rated as critical. One was the uh, South Umqua strategic plan and the other was the amphibian. Yeah, but they had like in terms of like high quality projects they, they described to us yesterday on the list below the funding line there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And those were almost all high or critical. It's like there was only, I think, one of those that was medium. So the flip side of that is that the reviewers in particular groups are looking at projects in that geography, not necessarily reviewing again the true. full bucket to weigh them. Look right at the spreadsheet. The Delta, Delta, Delta some of this is like this Chris Lorian, he's included in the averaging for the project's importance. And all of his reviews say, only review proposals based on funding recommendation and level and just put in a on almost all of the cells and so mm -hmm. the prioritization of odf and w on the critical or high to me strikes me as relatively arbitrary too there's some good work in there but it's we're implying a level of precision that just doesn't exist 
I agree with your conclusion. I, I don't know what Chris did. I couldn't interpret his. Yeah, <laughs> he was a he, he. So he's fish division conservation recovery program, and and he was just a an additional check on ODFW priorities. So you had regional review teams, and then you know fish division, who sort of has an eye on the statewide perspective, asking Chris to just give a look at what came forward and offer some feedback. Mm. But maybe to my clarity, we're, on the ones where AJ is the only one listed in the all data, yeah. you know, spreadsheet, and Chris, and you say the regional review team, is AJ speaking for a larger group of people in that summary, or is it AJ's work? Good question. When it's um, the full data, you can see it. When it's the sum data, then then AJ, like yesterday with presentations, they were speaking on behalf of the review teams. So the review team had, it has a, it has AJ, it has an ODF stewardship forester, it has, or something Some else. Of, yeah, I think it was stewardship forester. It has um, uh, NIMPS and a Fish and Wildlife Service up through sections, like up through four questions. Remember, the federal agencies didn't answer two of the sections of the review, but um, it is more than just AJ. And those sections being the ranking, the essentially ranking. The, the way I think of it, the ranking and the review of proposals they review. But it's weird because some of the other projects have multiple people making substantive comments in the raw data, not and just others, AJ. And others are just yeah. one person. Yeah. So well, that I think to add to that too, in addition, we, if we thought a project had something out of our expertise, we reached out to additional reviewers within the agencies. So through short form. Yeah, and I I know for myself, I asked for additional reviews for everybody or for all applications um, and compiled that into the review that my name is attached to, as well as Part of my role as a PFA biologist, I was specifically looking more so than maybe the other ODFW reviewers as to how well does this align with the seven categories that you as the MAP team said were of priority for funding. So I was also considering that in my review and my ranking of critical, high, medium, low, and the funding. That's helpful. Um, so one reason going back to why there was some unevenness in it was time. Yeah, there was a substantial amount of reviews with only about a month, and we had a lot of stuff going through. So it just was a lack of time. Understood. So in, I think though that that substantiates the overall comment I was trying to make is that yes. this is not a it's precise imprecise. process. And if we yeah. see good projects that are twenty spots below the line, there's room for us to substantiate why we think that's a good project. And that's the whole purpose of meeting here to aid to have these discussions. Right? <coughs> so we're simply a, a ranking exercise and then a rubber stamping exercise. We wouldn't be sitting here now today. So to your point, Eve, that's exactly what we're tasked with. Square Power on the Water. Yeah, right. Bear Creek, PD Creek, Upper Drews Creek. I mean, these are all high quality fish passage projects that are we're not funding here. Yeah. Uh, Chair, if I may, just a process issue for the folks that are online. If you wouldn't mind, if if Andy and Mark can keep their cameras on, but if the rest of the attendees could please turn your cameras off, it's a little bit distracting for attendees. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, Sarah. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so. We are now. So we still didn't make a decision on Pleasant okay. Creek, but we better make that call and vote. Yeah. So it's time. Yeah, we have to make this decision, and then after that decision, I think voting to approve the slate of projects will be uh, pretty easy. Once we are we have we decided we're not going to bifurcate the Lower Smith River estuary. Right now, we're funding the whole thing, yeah. and that then and so then kind of the, this yeah. whether we fund yeah. Yeah, versus. And I will just take the minute to say the Pheasant Creek project, although maybe it wasn't ranked as high by the review teams, is clearly in line with what we've been tasked with by the legislature, where the other project is clearly not. So given that, I would say, like, 
if I were to be asked, my opinion is that we keep Pheasant Creek. It scored higher, arbitrary or not, it scored higher by our teams, and it's in line with what we've been tasked to do per the legislation. Uh, if we need to just take a vote on it, I know that there's difference of opinion on this, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, and maybe the cleanest way to do this is to just vote as a committee on whether or not we move Pheasant Creek out. I mean, it's fine. I I would propose, I mean, they like had this whole thing. We could also fund Upper Drews Creek. It had four reviews. All of them said fund as is, and the four reviews were critical, high, high, and medium. Um, it's in a, a great Where project. On this, which line are you on? Drews Creek is number 36 in Lake um, County. So the plan point. is clear and concise, very clear, organized. Um, you know, it's all riparian work. I just has almost three times the math. Yeah, I just feel like that's a really high quality project that we could all get behind. And that ODF and W flagged in their presentation. It's a high quality project. And what would our and we would swap that for Pheasant Creek? Yeah. Why would you do that over the Cottonwood Creek one? Just the same applicant and rank too much higher. Uh I don't uh I don't I don't know. Uh, for me, the Cottonwood Creek applications were, I think, both related to the red band in Goose Lake. And I just felt like that wasn't a big priority. Is it Drews, though? So, is Drews's as well? Yeah. Yeah. That's so, geography. yeah, Cottonwood Creek may yeah. make sense if it scored higher as well. Those are just standing out in my work. Drews was a problem. Yeah, for consideration. Right now we're forty seven thousand dollars over our million yes. dollar goal. So if we remove Pheasant Creek and we bring in a ninety three thousand dollar project, that takes seven and puts us like right at the ten million. Yeah. Is it ten million is the ten million a hard number? No. no. I mean, there's, I mean, there's no reason we can't go a hundred thousand over. Well, because right? I mean it seems silly to me. If we're nickel and diming projects that are roughly equivalent, and we really want to do them both to knock one out of, I mean, for a hundred thousand bucks, I'd rather keep them both than pit them against each other. I think though it's not a hard number, we are trying to stay as close to it as we can. Yeah, I mean, I mean to me, plus or minus hundred out of ten million is. You mean on Pheasant Creek? Do Pheasant Creek and potentially Drews Creek, or potentially amphibians? But but regardless, um, I, I don't I don't think we should get obsessive about plus or minus. 100k 40 so what is your thoughts on that i'd like to hear sarah on going over by right now we're forty seven thousand over so if we were to add another uh well let's see 106 so that puts 150,000 over we have that play in the budget okay uh i wouldn't start adding more from there um, just because it's a slope and where do you stop? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, well, but you have that play to go 100 over. Could we, I mean, the other one we could do is we could pull out Pheasant Creek and do the North Fork and Peden Creek. Um, it's another one that was ranked right there in the same group. It's in Region 2, which is, you know, needs to work. Uh, <clears throat> Again, I, I insist there are excellent projects on this list that we can all get behind without a, a divided vote. Yeah, I like that idea. The, and the final that was that one. was, and this is another good one here. Uh, among the three reviewers, it's reviewed as critical, high, and medium. <laughs> and uh, you know, fund as is to them, and a fund with considerations. The critical is fund as is. You know, consideration. Uh, the fund is considerations. Uh, and even though that one is in region two, Paul, that's in the Willamette watershed, right? Correct. Lucky Mute is a tributary to the Willamette. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So that yeah. would add another project in the Willamette too. Yes, that's correct, Andrew. It's like right on the borderline. Yeah, this is the one where the logs were could be hauled twice. You know, they're going to put them down and pick them back up, right? Um, the staging area should be established prior to funding. 
good to understand who the project manager will report to. I mean, these are all the comments of that feature could be made about several of these projects. Yeah, no concerns. Which project are you looking at? This is North PD, North Fork PD Creek Enhancement Project. And again, it was one that was identified by ODF and W. And we could swap that out for Pheasant Creek and we'd come even closer to our $10 million line. So we are running low on time and it's time to start making some hard decisions here. Yeah. So, Keith, are you asking that we remove Pheasant Creek and bring North Fork PD Creek forward? Yes, and that we approve the slate as otherwise described by. Okay, Sarah, let's let's see if we can agree on moving North Fork PD Creek instead of Pheasant Creek, and then a separate vote for approving the slate, it's just to see if we can yeah. make that switch first. So, is there any opposition to moving Pheasant Creek Fish Passage out and replacing with North Fork PD Creek? I, I do. I'm not going to oppose it, but I, I had Pheasant Creek ranked pretty high, so. Um, that's not one. Even the balance, I, I would go the other way, but you'd prefer to see Pheasant Creek. But, I, but I, I'm not going to fall on my sword on that one either. Right. What are I, I guess? What thought. are your thoughts, Mark? Because I'm comfortable with either one. Well, I don't. I don't know enough about PD Creek to say swap that one for this one. So I guess, given that, I'd stay with Pheasant Creek. Yeah. They're both medium, and PD Creek scored higher. You know, by ODF and W. Not by us. Well, I guess I'd by not by us. ask ODF and W then if they had a choice between the two, which they would. <laughs> is that not implied by their scoring? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, we just haven't. If we view them as a committee as equal, I would look for, I would consider geographic distribution as an next. I issue. agree with Kristen. Yeah. So are we all okay with moving the North Fork PD Creek into slot 21 here? Yes. Yeah. Are you okay with that, Mark? Yeah, I guess so. I don't I don't feel like I have a lot to base that off, but okay. okay. Right. I think I'm with Bob. Like we ranked it higher. We're, we're all three on the same committee. Yeah. We ranked it higher yeah. for for whatever reasons we had. And so it feels a little uncomfortable because I didn't review PD Creek, but I don't want to follow my sword over it. They're both good projects. This is where it's so hard. It's like yeah. they're good projects. Please come back to us on Feather yeah. Creek and submit again. Honestly, this is where I would come and vote. And this is where that 100000 to me, if we're splitting hairs, then we have the money. Why do that? I'm sorry. I, I just was going to, I mean, I don't know whether this will work or not, but a possible path forward is um, ODFW could check with Joshua Hansen, who runs the S Fish program, to see if that this applicant is also put in for that program. If so, then perhaps bump it down for PD Creek and otherwise keep it in. It's just a I think S Fish is resolving. Is it not? S Fish is resolving and it's first come, first serve. Yeah. So it depends on, and I checked, and our, my computer died, <laughs> Andy. So it was how many applicants? 34. Send it to you. Um, yeah, 34 applicants, 6.6 6 million. I guess so. So it's just another pot of money. I think at this point, it's it's time to make a vote. And Bob, I, I understand what you're saying, and I think I agree with you that maybe it's not appropriate to be putting these two against each other. And we just also recommend on the PD Creek instead of trying to replace not gonna uh, the Fessick Creek. Well, could we take a vote on that? Uh, what would that total dollar amount be then, though? Yeah, I have it right here. So if we include both of them. But my only problem with that then is, is that just open the door for OK? Then then we're on this, like Sarah said, on this slippery slope of. of Why did that one get elevated? Uh -huh. And so I just feel like I feel like, no, we either swap it out and try and stay to close to the 10 million as possible. Or we're like, OK, what how high do we want to go? And I don't know about that. I think plus or minus 100 a or 150 or whatever it's going to come out to you is kind of a rounding error. I think if we start to go up a lot, and I kind of look at it from the perspective of an applicant, where you're 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 on that edge and we're getting swapped out in a meeting like this with people going, well, I'm not really sure why we're swapping one for the other. 
Yeah, that, that's pretty heartbreaking. I mean, if there was a reason this one's a lot better or this one is substantially different, but I think what we're sitting here saying out loud is we really don't know. So we're kind of, kind of throwing a dart at one or the other. And I think for for a rounding error, that's that's honestly silly. Um, and I do like if we're looking at them that this is a Polk County project that does go into the Willamette, which doesn't have as many projects in it. Right. So, so, that, so that's, that's a benefit as well. That's my distinction between the two is that. Yeah. Thank you for that, Andrew. Andy, uh, the total dollar amount, if we were to elevate this, is that we're going to fund both of them? Yes. Yeah, so uh, right, like 10 million, 149,530. And that's, I think you've got that kind of room. One and a half percent over 10 million. You do so, have that kind of room and, you know, geographic distribution of what you're funding. And if Kate were here, she'd be saying she, you know, she did say she wished there had been more Willamette projects. Okay. Yeah. So knowing that now and knowing that it is uh, 1050 and we are past our committee voting. I would like to make a motion that we accept the slate of projects, uh, including the two that we've just brought forward, the Baldwin Creek and Cool Springs and Dawson, as well as the North Fork PD Creek. Okay, and then I think we should read the whole list. Too I was going to say, I want to do a confirmation of the final funding amount, and then I can get a new list real quick. Um, so why don't we take a two minute break while you pull that list together and then Five minutes. Five minutes. All right. Thirty seconds. Go. I got three and a half. That's enough. That's how good are you? Okay. We're back. Andrew, can you hear us? Yes. Yes, I can. All right. We like appreciate the screen. I'll do one last review of this. Quick second. And Andy, when you share the screen, can you also describe what we're looking at so the folks online are able to clearly see, understand what it is that we're looking at? Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> a little better. And you guys, they can zoom in online in there. Classic Andy. <laughs> no one else brought their glasses today? <laughs> All right. I need a new pair. Give me a quick, we need to get one more in here. All right, so this will be the new fund, uh, funding, recommended funding. The cells that are highlighted like this, or the reduced for this one, we ended up keeping pheasants, so ignore that. So just to speak for the reduced, we have North Fork Walla Walla reduced by 170. We kept pheasant here. We reduced the clear clear creeks to a hundred thousand. That was our first discussion by two hundred two. Um, and then we brought up the ones just below the line also. So, so to be clear, that's Baldwin Creek and Cold Springs and Dawson restoration design. Yes. So are you saying Pheasant Creek is in or out? In. Okay. As well as North Fork PD Creek, correct? North Fork PD's here, correct. Um, and then Wall of Wall is, yep, there we go. Yep. So I'll just quickly uh, read through these. Yep. So the package that we're proposing to recommend to commission for funding includes the following projects. Beaver Creek Valley Scale Floodplain Restoration Design, Smith River Basin Fish Passage Improvement, Wilson Creek Fish Passage, Floodplain and Beaver Habitat Restoration, Cunningham Creek Fish Passage and Riparian Improvement Project, Blue Slough Primary Tidegate Upgrade, Highland Ditch Dam Removal, Water Resource and Fish Protection Project, Clear South Fork, Clear Creeks and Lower North Fork Large Wood and Fish Passage is funded with a reduction, Lado Tidegate and Beaver Slough Fish Passage Project, North Fork Eagle Creek Fish Habitat Restoration and Fuels Reduction Project. Again, clarifying the fuels reduction will not be included. Pataha Creek Coho Salmon Habitat Restoration. We have uh, the Rock Berm Removal and Blue Heron Channel Connection along the Bear Creek Corridor in Phoenix. 
establishment of redundant populations of bull trout in the upper Klamath Basin, Spencer Creek diversion, restoration, and monitoring, Lower Smith River estuary enhancement, Yellow Creek in-stream restoration phase two, Millicoma confluence restoration project, Myrtle Creek fish passage project. Uh, we have removed this Rock Creek Dam fish passage improvement. So Malala headwaters fire recovery. Assessment of MYY brook trout as a technology to manage non-native brook trout in the upper South Fork Sprague River, Klamath River Basin. Pleasant Creek Fish Passage, Upper Sutton Creek Fish Passage, Leach Botanical Area Habitat Enhancement Project, North Fork Walla Walla River, River Mile 4.3 to 6.3 Floodplain Restoration with a reduction to only fund the implementation, Baldwin Creek Fish Passage and Habitat Enhancement Project, Cool Springs and Dawson Restoration Design, as well as the North Fork PD Creek Enhancement Project. That sound accurate? All right. Um, I just wanted to declare that I have a potential conflict of interest associated with projects that will support Trout Unlimited since I'm employed by Trout Unlimited yep. um, for the record. Thank you for that. Um, with that, I so move or I move to um, approve that slate of projects that you just listed. Very good. Do we have a second? Second. All right. We've got a motion and a second. We should put this to a vote. Uh, everyone in favor? Uh, Please respond to the affirmative. Uh, yeah. Aye. Yay. Aye. 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 There you go. It's uh, unanimous. That's the that's the list. We now have uh, committee closing comments and meeting wrap ups, and the, this is just another opportunity I'd like to take to thank everybody who took place in this process. Andy and Sarah, thank you so much for all of your help. It's been a, a long road to get where we are today, considering it was just only a little over a year ago when we sat here for the first time as a committee. I also want to make sure to recognize Bob Van Dyke's efforts for the whole first year as chair. He did a lot of heavy lifting to create frameworks that we are now distributing money through. Thank you to all of the uh, ODFW reviewers, as well as the folks from the services. <laughs> and all the ex officio members. It's uh, been a really cool process to see everybody come together. And finally, thank you to the rest of the MAC team here. Any other comments from anybody else? Good work, Chad. Thanks for leading. Thank us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, and just appreciation. You know, you are volunteer committee members, and this is a tremendous amount of your time over the last year, and we're so grateful for your commitment and all the effort that went into it. We have a long list, list of lessons learned <laughs> that we'll be uh, teeing up for future future agendas yeah. so that next list here can be even better. Thank you for that, term. And continuous improvement is something we should all seek. All right. With that, we are done. Thank you. Thank you.